Hello everyone, my name is Griet Verhaert and today I will be presenting a summary of my PhD research entitled The Role of Database Marketing in Improving Direct Mail Fundraising. My name is Dirk van Ampoel and I'm here in the role of Griet's advisor during her PhD studies. To start, let me explain the title of this research more in depth. Then, we will discuss each of the four studies that made up my dissertation. Fundraising really relates to all kinds of campaigns used by charities to collect money for specific projects. Charities need to raise a lot of money. The more money they can raise, the more good causes they can help. But campaigns are really expensive, which means charities need to look for better and more effective ways to raise their funds. There are many different types of fundraising campaigns, many of which you could probably list on your own. Donating coins to a box in the supermarket, street fundraising, gala events organized by specific groups, such as those after the earthquake in Haiti. But online fundraising also is becoming more and more important. For example, if you visit the World Wildlife Fund's website, you can adopt a giant panda by donating a specific amount of money each month. However, the most important medium for charities is still direct mail. Charities send mailed messages to a list of possible donors like this man who collects all the direct mail he received during a year. As you can see, some people are subject to a lot of solicitations. Many of those requests include more than a letter such as gadgets that are somehow linked to the charity's message. Amnesty International uses a pen. It can be symbolic as an instrument of torture, but it also means an instrument of change. The charity therefore wants donors to act now and use the pen to support Amnesty. In Greet's research, she investigated how database marketing might improve such direct mail fundraising campaigns. Charities maintain databases of possible donors, and these databases contain a lot of tables. There's a wealth of information, often based on very different sources. Here you see an example of payment history. Every row stands for a specific donation. This donation can be assigned to a specific donor and has a specific pay date. In most of these cases, there also is a clear link between the payment and the campaign. To do any analyzing, you have to summarize this information and then come up with some characteristics for each individual donor. Suppose we want to figure out just who donor 1 is. As you can see, donor 1's first donation was a response to an acquisition campaign. And the last donation was two days ago in response to a reactivation campaign. This table is also helpful for understanding some common terminology used in database marketing. For example, in the term RFM, R stands for recency or the number of days since the last donation. F stands for frequency or the number of donations. And M stands for monetary value or the total amount donated in the past. If we want to calculate these characteristics for donor 1, we see that recency is 2. There are 5 payments in the table, so frequency is 5. And the total monetary amount donated is 85. Now, for this example, I used the payment table, but other tables are in the database too. So we can start combining the different tables into one summary table. In the donor table, one row stands for a specific donor and contains information like his or her address, salutation, email address, and so on. The campaign table stores the solicitation history, so every row stands for one direct mailing sent to a specific donor on a specific date with a specific campaign code. You also have a table containing the communication history, including every incoming and outgoing communication. For example, if the donor calls the charity to complain, that call had better be registered. 
The next step is to combine the information in the different tables into the summary table, in which every row is a donor and every column stands for a specific characteristic. Here we use numeric values because numbers are the necessary input for analyses. Even for a variable without a numerical value like gender, you can create an input variable maybe equal to 1 for a woman and 0 for a man. You see the other possibilities too, such as language, age, availability of email address and so on. If you combine the payment and campaign table, you could even calculate the average response rate. Using all this information, a charity designs a campaign. The campaign then is evaluated by three parameters. First, campaign revenue. The total revenue or revenue per solicitation is driven by two major decisions. The response rate, which means whether donors choose to donate or not, and the gift size, or how much they donate if they choose to do so. Imagine that the charity sends a mailing to 10,000 active donors. It receives 1,000 payments, so the response rate is 10%. The average gift size of these 1,000 payments is 30 euros, so the revenue per solicitation sent is 3 euros. But there is a problem with this number. It forgets about the cost of the campaign. So subtract 70 to 90 cents from the average to get a profit of 2.20 euros per direct mail cent. In addition, this case got a pretty good response rate of 10%, whereas a campaign to a cold list of people who have never contributed before will likely mean a lower response rate and thus lower income. Overall then, it is extremely relevant for charities to identify new strategies that can maximize both response rate and gift size. In general, charities determine their strategies by considering three types of campaigns. First, an acquisition campaign targets prospects or people who have never donated to the charity before. Once a person makes a donation, he or she is an active donor and the charity tries to retain these active individuals, probably by sending them a letter every month. A special type of retention campaign is a major gift campaign that asks the donor for a large gift. Another type of retention campaign attempt to convert occasional donors into regular donors with a standing order to donate. Finally, if a donor does not respond to solicitations for at least two and a half years, the charity categorizes him or her as a lapsed donor but keeps the addresses in the database for possible use in reactivation campaigns. To improve direct mail campaigns, two dimensions are really critical, the content and the target. Therefore, in my dissertation, I first investigated different suggested donation amounts. Then, I considered what happened when a charity indicated the total amount of money that needed for a specific project. Switching to focus on the target, in a third study, I investigated the relevance of collecting information about the donor's empathy. Finally, the last study in my dissertation focused on competition in direct mail. There are a few main reasons to focus on direct mail. This instrument is so important for charities, as a recent report by the Direct Marketing Association noted. The primary barrier to good customer relationship management which we abbreviate CRM, by charities is a lack of consumer data outside the firm since no one is sure how competition across charities affects their fundraising abilities. So we investigated donation behavior across more than 20 charities and we virtually always consider the RFM value of the donor. Remember, that's recency, frequency and monetary value. Although research into helping behavior is growing, most prior research investigates it in a, a laboratory setting and or with a questionnaire about intentions to help. This PhD research investigates real donation behavior using actual transactional data.